Good evening, guys. Welcome those who are with us for the first time, uh, and welcome back, everybody else. <laughs> so tonight's topic is leg uh, and foot, but yeah, all of the leg. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a fragment starting from the hip, um, then thigh. We'll talk specifically about the knee quite a lot, and then uh, shin and foot. Нога. Нога а, состоит из бедра, из голени, из коленного сустава и стопы. Mm -hmm. So, we are going to be now establishing the whole leg, as we said, starting from the hip, then thigh, knee articulation and shin. So, knee is essentially, it's a large articulation. Mm -hmm. And the kneecap or this knee articulation is placed in between the epiphysis of two large bone. Epiphysis is the end of the bone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, if we were to describe a thigh uh, and the whole area of the thigh with geometrical shape, we can describe it as a cylinder. Um, mm -hmm. So think of it as a cylinder that is prolonged. And then you need to figure out what is the inclination and what is the perspective in this case, uh, what is the pose and how does it in, in influence the perspective. Mm -hmm. And same with the shin, it is cylindrical. And here as well, we want to right away analyze what is the inclination and how does the perspective influence our cylinder. So, and that's, and with this thought in mind, we'll start.
платформа, которая входит в пространство. Mm -hmm. So, cylindrical shape that is placed in a certain way in space. So now we've established the thigh, and now uh, we're, we're looking at the attachment of the shin, and we're thinking again about the general form and general placement and inclination, and how does one cylinder uh, relates, how does it relate to the other one? So, cylinder and then a sphere, a sphere of the knee compartment. So this is a scheme on the side that you could do, simple one. Но бедро и голи они не такие уж простые формы, они не такие ровненькие и и не такие ровно округлые. Там есть определенный рельеф, и этот рельеф обуславливает мускулатура, которая крепится. Okay, so and of course when we say about the m general uh, form that is a s can be described as cylinder, it, again it is a very generic uh, way, but we need to consider that within that cylinder uh, form 
Uh, there are various of other forms that are uh, that exist due to muscle uh, muscle mass. То есть мы должны усложнить эти цилиндрики. Мы должны mm -hmm. дать, как бы художник рисует поверхность, mm -hmm. рельеф, поверхностный рельеф предметов, mm -hmm. и мы должны. So first we establish the general form, and now we start developing the relief of the surface and showing what other forms we have on top. And for that, of course, uh, we need to know anatomy, we need to know First of all, the bonal structure that is on the inside, and second of all, we need to know what are the muscles that are uh, placed on top of those bonal structures. What is the form that большеберцовой кости mm -hmm. можно можно сравнить с капителью. Mm -hmm. So uh, the two oh, I'll show you. Uh, вот эти, да? Вот, вот нет, внизу. А, okay. Это мышилки, это надмышилки. Значит, uh -huh. вот эту формочку. So there are condyles, if you guys are familiar with the term, and there are epicondyles. So epicondyles belong to the main bone of the thigh and condyles uh, to the main bone of the shin. Just make the rest of mm -hmm. I will do now a scheme of this part because it's important and mm, complex area. подставочка такая капитель она находится вот здесь mm -hmm. как у нее есть угол и площадки а фронтальные площадки mm -hmm. so if we do a scheme of this area it could look like a cubic form that is uh, that has this um, like a column in the base of it so and then uh, generally again generally speaking in geometrical terms we can then divide it into these planes main planes that are frontal side Mm -hmm. So, and if you look closely to this wonderful mechanism, you'll see how it almost works as a puzzle in order to be to flex and uh, extend, right? So then, the form of both bones is is in this way for a certain reason. площадочки на этой капительке находится вот эта форма которая как 
пару, которая имеет определенную угу. ось и вращается. Угу. So then the upper condyle, the apicondyle, can be described as well as a cylindric, shorter cylindric shape that has such design again for a specific reason, so that there is this movement between the elements. И вот происходит вот такое движение. So then, thanks to this kind of design, uh, we can have the movement of flexing and extending. При этом мы должны соблюдать. Понимая, понимая, какая форма находится внутри здесь, это, это условно. Конечно же, там uh -huh. не все так, uh -huh. не, не так по плоскостям ровно. Там есть определенные бугорочки, ямочки. Uh -huh. Но в целом мы можем представить uh -huh. суставчик как вот такой формы. И плюс сверху. Uh -huh. So a scheme like that really helps you to break it down to very simple geometrical shapes to understand the general design and structure. But clearly in real life, if you look at those bones, they have a lot more complexity. So there are tuberosities, there are indents, so they have a lot more complex relief than that. Okay, so we marked, I marked just now with hatching all the planes that belong to the side plane. По которому проходит граница света тени, смотрите, вот. And here on the border of two planes, as we, if we separate the frontal and the side, this is where we will find sh shadow line. Вот. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we've established these planes in order to understand where the shadow line will go because the shadow line is the area that describes the most information specifically for this reason because there are planes that are meeting. So now we'll do the same for the lower area. Mm -hmm. 
As we establish all these essential parts, we need to think of perspective, which means we should also check ourselves by putting these constructive lines and see if perspective-wise what we do makes sense. So now we start developing the form both on, uh, of the silhouette and then working out the shadow line because as we said it bears the most information. So as we go now, as we develop the fuller form, the fuller shape of our uh, thigh area, we also can adjust and cut a little bit the silhouette if we see it's necessary. You can hide it behind you. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. So as well, as we work, your movement of those hatches that, you, that you're using, they also should follow the logic of the form. So here in this case, if 
the form is round, it's cylindric, then also your movement, how you work your charcoal should follow that. кубик мы должны работать на границах переломов плоскостей это если о коленном в о колене говорим вообще вот эти вот формочки угу. вот так вот получается кубик и мы должны работать на границах переломов плоскостей как бы отделять угу. фронтальные боковые Frontalne, mm -hmm. vertically, and horizontally. So mostly we want to make it clear also for ourselves. First of all, the division of planes like frontal, side, top plane. Again, because the most interesting, the most uh, informative parts are there where those planes meet. So here, what influences the most, the relief of the thigh is a large muscle that spreads all the way from the hip to almost uh, foundation of the bone, like to the epiphysis of the bone, to the epicondyle. Mm -hmm. And then it's attaching actually, no, sorry, not at the epicondyle, at the condyle of the bone, the main bone of the shin. Mm -hmm. uh, could you try like uh, tensing your thigh mm -hmm. for a bit? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So in our model's leg, this part is very readable, very visible. So it's nice for artists. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you can observe very clearly here the changing of the plane going from this semi-circular or like cylindric form to a flatter plane. So there is this flatter area, flatter plane, and then again the cylinder continues. And here we'll find also a small, almost vertical uh, plane. And in this area that we just described, so like going from semicircle to flatter area, 
this is well where the shadow line will go as well and this is where we will read the form the most and here same principles apply in terms of space and in terms of distribution of the tone in space elements that are further away from us they also have less contrast less detail whatever is closer to us has more contrast and detail Mm -hmm. So here this is a large quadricep muscle mm -hmm. that has like four bodies or four heads. That's why it's the name is quadricep. Um, so this is the mm -hmm. so this is a muscle that influences this area the most. It's a large voluminous uh, muscle tissue. So it has more, this muscle has more volume in the central part of it and then towards the uh, place of attachment or insertion it becomes thinner. Mm -hmm. So it becomes, becomes thinner and also flatter. So here, you, as you draw, you need to think of both. You need to think of this, which is the structure inside and main directions of forms, and how on, on top of that structure you lay the muscles and how do they influence the surface. So you need to think of both of these things simultaneously. And where we have that those turning points where plane changes or where two planes meet, that's where we want to put the emphasis. We want to put a uh, accent. Okay, so now uh, we've established main forms, main shapes, we've talked about uh, the silhouette and the shadow line, the main musk, uh, muscle masses, 
So now what we want to do, we want to tune in the tone itself a little bit in order to establish and re-establish even the um, spatial placement, that everything makes sense in terms of what's closer, what's further, how generally this whole piece looks like, if that makes sense. And here, as we uh, reestablish the tone and tune in the tonal situation, we need to analyze more than anything, first of all, where is our source of light? Where is the strongest light coming onto? In this case, it's a thigh because the light is coming from upwards uh, from the right. And then there's also reflected light that's coming from the uh, from the floor, that is in our case white material, and that reflected light would be seen on the shin area. So then, of course, the light distribution will never be the same all along the same element. Uh, if we talk just about a thigh, mm -hmm. There will be a stretch of the tone, there will be a distribution of the tone from up down because also we have the strongest light that hits one area and then from then on the tone becomes darker. And then the whole vertical area, the whole shin area is going to be also different to the whole thigh area because that is completely different, uh, it's placed completely differently in relation to the source of light. So, and once we analyze the light situation, we can as well uh, understand where are the strongest contrasts and where are the weakest contrasts. For example, where the light hits stronger, so the contrast will be stronger, the light will be lighter, the shadow will be darker. If there is less light, then all the transitions will not be so evident. So then the difference between the light area and the tone or the shadow area won't be so, uh, so obvious. So, mm -hmm. so here then we can establish the mid-tone, uh, making sure that it's in no way conflicting to the mid-tones on the top because mid-tones on the top have a different tonality due to more light. So in this way, once we establish the tone properly like this, then we create correct understanding of space. Mm 
место соединения, где капителька, капителька нам видится каким-то уголком, вот здесь где горизонтальные и вертикаль уголочком встречают, и это вот тут вот будет свет вот в этом месте. So here again we go back to a little bit an analyzing and uh, thinking about these rough forms to make sure that what we've done now tone-wise still makes sense in terms of the structure. So, yeah, we're thinking of all these connecting parts, as we said, epicondyles, condyles, mm -hmm. thinking of their shape and also the connection of one to another as we continue establishing these parts downward. So also these lines, constructive lines that show the relief, the full form, they can be very helpful in the process. So here, key parts that are usually the end of the bones, the epiphysis of the bones, are the parts where we will have tonal emphasis as well, because they're the parts that are standing out typically and influence the surface.
Да, мы работаем карандашиком, мы можем вводить штрих, который тоже нам будет подчеркивать, потому что поможет выделять угу. грани... выпуклости границы перелома плоскостей. So hatching is also one of the tools that you can use in order to show directions of planes, directions of forms, and to as well re-emphasize certain parts that you want to highlight. Also, cast shadows has one of the uh, elements that shows us the direction of forms. So, but we'll leave it at more or less schematic 
um, look. <laughs> All right. And uh, if I may see some of your sketches, yeah. Еще еще тон водить. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.